So once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the interesting part is with no further ado, no further ado, mentor, friend, father, son, leader, coach, born and raised on the west side of Chicago. Guys, today we're going to find out the most interesting thing about one of Chicago's finest, one of the best to do it at a young age. Welcome to the platform today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. Tim Anderson. What's going on, man? What's up, big dog? How you feel? <laughs> it is an absolute pleasure, man. I know we've been kind of playing Zoom tag, uh, trying to get you on the show uh, just to talk, right? This is the interesting part, where we talk to the most interesting people in and throughout our city about the most interesting things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when I, when I was doing my homework, kind of trying to understand who would empower this platform, you were, the, you were on the top five on the list because you're doing it man you're doing it at a young age it's interesting when i go out and about in this basketball world and just in and throughout the city and your name comes up it's always a bunch of love and positivity surrounded around that um tim what what, what is that all about what does that come from well i think honestly you know being raised by my granny and my aunt you know uh and, and and just learning so much from them and seeing and, and how impactful it was to see, you know, strong women, um, you know, be able to raise, you know, young men and, 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 and just, you know, but also have the gentle touch of a woman that was really, really important. So I think uh, one of the best things for me, you know, she always told me to treat everybody with the same respect. And, and you know, also is just, um, you know, you, 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 I, I just try to help everybody, you know, where I come from, you know, we, we, we didn't have as many resources, but I just try to help everybody that I possibly can and just try to create as many allies, as many people, you know, uh, and empower as many people as I can. So I just try to always think that way, no matter what, you know, is going on internally, you know, because you never know what someone's going to say about you when they leave you. So you always want to have that type of impact on people. So I just try to, you know, have that, you know, especially for my granny, you know, and just, just, she was strong. She was really, really strong, but she also had the gentle touch of a woman. So, and, and that was important to me. And I kind of got, you know, some of those, you know, uh, mannerisms and, you know, key features and stuff like that from her. That's always love, man. And it, it, it was at a young age. It's, it's interesting, right? So we set this, so we set this interview up, we set this interview up and, and, um, there were a few people when they found out that you were gonna be on the platform, they wanted to jump on. So let me see here, cause I know we just got started, but I wanna make sure there are a few people that are gonna pop in here and uh, just show some love. Uh, who we got coming up uh, first? Wait a minute, who is this? You gotta show us your camera now, we're live. You gotta come on and show us your camera. Oh, we got my man, Dan Marty. <laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Timmy! What, what's going on? Marty Monaghan, um, former king of the court, Chicago, Illinois, out in Atlanta now, doing his thing way big. Um, played, a, played a huge role. As I, you know, when we think about uh, the maturation of what you're doing now, Tim, and, and some of the lives that you've had an opportunity to influence, I know Marty was around quite a bit of that. Marty, you want to take a moment? Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. First of all, thanks for having me on, Kiss. Appreciate it. Um, and, and Tim, man, super proud of you, brothers. That you know, obviously from a distance, watching your your work and watching your maturation um, in basketball, and you know, having some experience as a coach myself. You know, way back when, coming from a coaching family, my dad coached for over forty years. Chicago Public Schools in some form or fashion, and then also at Hills Franciscan High School where I coached as well. It um, it's good to see, you know, um, young men like yourself who came up with us. I don't want to say you came up under us, but you came up with us, um, and, and you know, matured in the game, and now you're affecting lives, man, um, in, in a super positive way. And that's that's really at the end of the day what it's all about, Tim. So I'm super proud of you, man. Keep pushing, keep it, keep affecting these young men's lives, man. Because you never know, man. You never know how much you touch somebody's life, you know. Hey, man, you know, Marty, really, really appreciate that. I know that, you know, I people gonna be popping in through 
in on this uh, segment throughout the show. Really appreciate you uh, jumping on here and 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 yep. showing that love, man. Um, we're gonna get back to the interview, but 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 thank you so much. I know the role that you played, uh, Tim. Anything for Marty, man? man? Oh, it's crazy because when when Marty came on, it like tears almost came to my eyes because I remember the first time I you know I came around you guys and and you taught me so much like far as being humble. It didn't matter who you was or you you gonna have to wait your turn. And I think learning that humility from you guys and you know, getting with you guys every Sunday and, you know, you, you, you guys teaching me certain things about being a man, just using basketball, you know, for, for as, as a life skill. And, and sure. you know, Marty, you know, this is, you know, you, this is some of the most positive stuff you said to me because you used to be on my butt, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> it's crazy because I respect that, you know what I'm saying? I come from an era where we respect that. And I think that's kind of lost in the sauce a little bit. But, man, I just, when I just saw Marty, it just reminded me, of your footwork kiss and just Marty coming and controlling the gym and you gotta play, you can't play, you can't play. You make me wait three games and like, damn and I gotta I gotta wait till the last game to play. But it built so much character and it and it, and I understood and it helped me at a young age how to control a whole a whole environment and just how to be a better leader. So that's yeah. something that you really, you really are, Marty. And you know what I'm saying? I really respect that. And that's something that I, you know, gravitated towards you. And I've never was able to tell you that I appreciate you for that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm grateful for you, dog. And, I, and, and you know, and I got to do a better job of, you know, being in communication with you guys because I guarantee you I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. You guys taught me so much. You know, you guys don't even understand on how I handle business today that I learned from watching you guys interact before, after. You know, Kiss got to get to the gym almost an hour early because he got to get loose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the camaraderie, you know what I'm saying? You guys really, really like being around each other. But when we competed, it was almost fights. You know, right. and then after everybody kicked it and had a good time. Fellowship. Was, huh? I said it was, fellowship. It was, man, and it was yeah, so fellowship. Cool. It was so crazy because, you know, everybody knew Marty ran the show. I don't care if it was Michael Jordan came in. He <laughs> going you know, and, 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 but that just goes to show. Not saying that none of us are leaders, but we understand to be a great leader, you got to understand how to be a great follower, too. That's right. That's yeah. Right. That's yeah. right. Hey, Marty, man, I appreciate you. I know you, you, you were busy to take this time out. Grace to stay. Okay. The interesting part is forever indebted, brother, and we're gonna look to get you on. I know you're working on a few on a few yeah. um but, projects down there. Yeah, Kiss, before I before I jump off though, man, both of you cats, um, you know, an organization I work with, um, I'm the vice chairman of the Black Man Lab. We do a weekly thing, um, and it's to touch young young black men's lives, right? Um, but we always have a topic matter every week. Um, coming up I'm not sure, maybe three or four weeks down the road, but we're going to be doing coaching. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to, I want to see, I'm going to reach out to both of you guys to see if I can get you on. As Please. Our powers, man. All right. I'm, so, I'm, 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 works out. I'm, I'm there for you. Okay. I got you. Much love y'all, man. Tim, again, right. proud of you, brother. You push it. Same Al. Love y'all, man. Appreciate you, man. Love you. <laughs> yeah, we go, we go, we go, we going to do that throughout the show, man, because when I think about it, you know, just watching your growth, right? I think it's always important that we, every once in a while, and I'm not saying you don't do this, we just touch bases with, you know, part of that foundation, right? So yeah, as we move on, as we move on, um, who are you? What, what are you currently doing? Who is Tim Anderson? Um, so I'm the uh, assistant, um, uh, head assistant men's basketball coach at DePaul University. Um, I have my own training company, which is a, uh, Ground Zero basketball training, which houses a lot of uh, NBA guys, and I got a, um, some some structures that also train, you know, co collegiate and high school guys, and uh, all the way down to the grammar school level. Um, just trying to get into the construction thing. I got a non for profit, the Rain Project, where we um, we deal with uh, violence prevention because I think a lot of times, you know, kids, we we get so caught up in the intervention when something happened now you're trying to put a band-aid on it so mm -hmm. i think like i said it's a lot of different you know factors that go into you know um violence and trying to prevent it you know not just because people wake up and just want to kill somebody i think you know mental illness is is important i think the lack of resources is important i think um job training is important everybody want a job but they don't know how to work so i think it's a lot of different entities homelessness you know they don't got nowhere to go so i think 
it's a lot of different entities that go goes into you know violence. So trying to be preventative and you know trying to prevent things before it happens. So I'm spending a lot of time with that now, and you know of course uh, being a father and, and you know and and and, and, and trying to be the, the the best version of myself and my kids, and 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 that's that's really really important for me. That's what's up. I think Marty hit on it. You know we talk about uh, the growing up. Um, to what you're doing now, who you are now, a lot of it came from the hood, essentially, right? The hood. What what was the hood? Exactly where are you from? So I'm from I'm from the west side. I'm from Henry Horner Homes. I call it Double <laughs> But I spent a lot of time in Rockwell. You know, I'm familiar with the village too. So a little bit on the west side, but I'm, you know, born and raised in Henry Horner Home. And, and you know, it was crazy because if I had a chance to do it over, I wouldn't change it. That's I learned, you know, so much stuff, you know, uh, just being aware and and just, you know, day to day. And, and, and you know, it's crazy because it's like, well, when we grew up, we didn't know we was in poverty. You know, we were still able to have nice shoes and stuff like that. We didn't really <laughs> know. So, you know, I try, you know, I try my best not to, you know, uh, use crutches or a handicap or, or inability because you have a father or because of the race card or whatever, because I just feel like, you know, everybody got the same 24 hours. And I think if you align yourself with the right people and have the right relationships and just stay focused and understand that it's a marathon, you, you're going to continue to move, you know, in that direction. So, um, yeah, I'm from the West side and I'm proud to be from the West side, but you know, I love the South side. I love Chicago, but I was born and raised on the West side. Beautiful. You, you hit on something, and I'm going I'm to stay on task, but you hit on something here um, that I look at as the power of the big mo. You know, read a lot of books. Um, John, C, John C. Maxwell John C. Maxwell talked about uh, the power of the big mo. Uh, mm -hmm. Momentum, right? Networking, relationships. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. talk to our audience about, you know, not necessarily, you don't have to know the entire blueprint, but you have to begin to build positive momentum. Does that come from just knowing what you want to do? What does that come from? Um, I, honestly, you know, I think it's, I just think you got to try to kind of stay focused because, you know, I, like I said, I did an interview, you know, last week and, and our community, it, uh, the way I grew up, I'm grateful. But what it does, though, case it gives you a false illusion of how stuff really is. So it's like all the wrong stuff is glorified. And then even down to like, you know, women. So now, you know, I'm married and, you know, and, 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 but when I was coming up, we was taught, don't trust no, you know what, don't, you know, don't trust no yeah. women. And, you know, and that's so crazy. Like, <laughs> why would you do that? So now, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, un, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta recondition yourself, right? Like because it's been embedded in me. Don't trust no women. Don't trust no women. Like no, 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 no. That's not right. You know you gotta be strong, and the way you gotta be strong, you gotta keep your foot on their neck. No, the way you be strong is allow them to be them. That's and, right. and I don't want to, you know, go off in a kiss. You know, you raised me, dog. I don't want to go off a little bit because I can, I can digress. But I really, really. You know, I really don't like when they say, man, it's hard for a black man. No, no, it really is. But it's really harder for a black woman because when they're born, you know, they always, they, they come with in love. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, at some point they'll get with somebody who beat them down mm. and, and, and then tell them stories and do them wrong or whatever. And on top of that, in their mind, people are telling them to get to the top. You got to do it a certain way. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you can't work your way to the top. You got to have a relationship with the boss, you gotta do that. So it's yeah. so hard for women, and it's like, and then it's like, we don't treat them like us. You know, as a whole, you know, me and you, you know, but holistically, they don't look at a woman as equal. And man, they, and, and you know, Kiss, and, and you taught me this, man, a long, long, long time ago. They're actually way, way smarter than us. They're, they're way, so way more calculated. You know, way, way more calculated than us, but it's like, <laughs> They already born, so we born with a strike, they born with two. So you feel me? Right, so right, right. When they, when they get the success that they have, you know, they're gonna be a little heartened too. But it's just so much, kids. You know, when we get into our conversation, we go real deep, and I don't want to yeah. do that to No, it's but, true. I, I but, think it's in, I think it's important that the, the understanding that you have about momentum and and the way that you explain the opportunity area for a black man, right? And how we're able to overcome and look at things a different way. What, what the books say, as a man thinketh, 
is who they are, right? It's extremely clear that the way you think is the way you move. Mm -hmm. And that could be in a positive direction or it could be in a not so positive direction. But it's the Absolutely. power. I think what I just heard you talk about is the power of a strong mind. And more importantly, uplifting if you're going to be successful in any way. You got to find you a partner out here who you can yeah. uplift, who you can respect. Who, who y'all gonna stand side by side, you're not standing in front of her, right? Yeah. Stand side yeah. by side, her thoughts are just as important because you know you can't do half the things that you do and be able to move around and, and be able to articulate your message without knowing mm -hmm. you're gonna go home and get it in the, you know, get it real, mm -hmm. get the love, get the feedback that continue to make you strong, mm -hmm. right? Right. So, no, I appreciate that. From, 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 Little Village to the Rockwell, I'm sure there were plenty of hood tales. History shows me that, though, there were a lot of pros that came out that situation. Uh, what you say? I said there were a lot of pros from Rockwell Gardens to, to Henry Horners to Little Village. There were a lot of pros that came Absolutely. out that situation, right? So for how much we think we didn't have, talk to me about some of the guys that really put their head down like yourself and came out of that situation in a positive way. You, you know, it just, I think, and it's, it's sad to say, if success was easy, everybody would accomplish it. Yep. And, and, and again, you know, everybody want the high road, they want to take the airplane, nobody really want to take the train or the bus. Mm -hmm. You know, they think it's supposed to be instantly gratified. So um, I think, and then, and then like I said again, and remember this though, Kiss, where I come from, that people, people value the wrong stuff. They mm -hmm. value the hood legend. They value the game banger. They value those guys with the nice cars and the nice clothes and the jewelry and stuff. And they don't value the guys that go to school every day to make it happen. So that makes it, that makes it so much harder. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the biggest factor, I think, is, is to, to, to understand who you are and to, and, to be, and to be secure with yourself. And, and at a lot of times, I think that's the hardest things for us to do as a man is to be transparent and just to be butt naked and just be secure with who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and once we understand that and know that and say, hey, look, this is what, what I'm going to do and what I'm going to try to do and understand that it's a marathon and you just keep building and building every day and working towards whatever goal that is and just being like, just understanding who you are and just being good with just standing in your lane where ain't no traffic at. Now, it's so much easier or 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 so i can say it's harder to not want to be over there to not want to go over there you know to not want to do those things and get that instant gratification so you know th those guys i think it's way more that go to the person to just being a professional athlete you got to be a good person you mm -hmm. got to have good pedigree you got to have more sizzle than substance you know um and and i think all of this plays a, a huge role in defining who we are and in your day-to-day um, your your day to day progress or lack of progress doesn't define uh, who you are holistically if you continue to move forward. But the thing is, is that if we if we understand what we're trying to do and don't get caught up going the other way, you know what I'm saying? Don't get caught up going the other way, which is which is sometimes hard because you know that's what society likes. Society likes that the, the girls like that. You know, everybody tell you that's the right thing to do. But you got to stay strong and you got to be disciplined. You know, I wasn't smoking weed, wasn't drinking, wasn't doing none of that. I was going, playing basketball, going home. You know, and it was, you know, I didn't get, you know, all the girls and none of that at a young age. And, you know, I, they, they didn't like that, you know. And that was okay. But I knew in my mind, if I followed this blueprint that was laid down from Sonny Parker to use basketball, don't let it use me. You know, don't be the guy on the street that was, they were saying 20 years from now, oh, man, Tim Anderson, he was really, really good at basketball you know, and try to use this vehicle to get a free education. So I tried to just stay, you know, uh, to, 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 to core with that and just, you know, it's being mentally tough through all of it is most important too. That's, that, that, that's huge, man. You hit on something because through your learnings and, and, and I hear you continue to reference back to what we like to call OGs and, mm -hmm. and, and people in and throughout the community, obviously, um, <laughs> One of the one of the least used skills, I think, is the listening skill. Looks Man, like, look, looks like you got, and and I can attest to it. You, you're a listener, 
right? You ain't one to be talking over people and you ain't a know-it-all type of cat. But when you think about your current role uh, as, as head assistant here, I know that you started the 2019 season um, sitting in for, for the coach. You coached those first, what, five yeah. games, three games? Yeah, games. How, mm -hmm. how was that, Big East? Who, who, first of all, <laughs> who did you all play? Uh, you know what's crazy? Um, I, I can't – I don't even remember who we played. Uh, it was uh, – but I was preparing like it was Duke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it came it, it came and went so fast. And you said something that was important to me, and I try to, you know, uh, pride myself on, you know, listening to comprehend, not listening to respond. You know what I'm saying, kids? Yeah. A, lot people, a lot of people just sit right here and be like – I can't wait for him to stop talking so I can say something. And you really didn't comprehend whatever the message was. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and and I have to get better than that because you know it, it with 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 great responsibility or or, or, or whatever you, you understand that you you might think you know everything, but you still have to listen. You still have to listen. You still have to comprehend, and you have to make the best decision or or, or give the the soundest advice as you can. But you cannot do that, kiss, if you're trying to. I can't wait for kids to stop talking so I can talk, you know? So, um, but uh, I, I don't even remember those first two. I think it was University of Chicago, Alcorn State, and Farley Dickinson, maybe. Um, but but the way I prepare, I prepare like, you know, we're going to play Duke every day. And, and, and I learned so much from being in that head chair, so much that, uh, you know, just having responsibility for everything, managing the game, managing players, egos, getting people shots, trying to – get stops and you no know, stuff that was innately in me because I no, think no. I was, you know I think I was born a leader but I also think I developed uh more great leadership skills along the way from being around other great leaders you know because no. let's be honest because none of us is really inventing anything you might come <laughs> up with something that you're going to take a little bit from here a little bit from there a little bit from here and now you're going to say you did that no it was done before yeah. you might do it at a higher level or higher platform or whatever but nobody's really you feel me so I think that that was the just just having that experience to 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 lead a group of guys and they responded to you and you know you coached before you coached your son you know I trained your son and and you know me and you had a relationship for over twenty years and the the the, the thing is that I always tell people the hardest thing to do as a coach is to get your team to play together and play hard and once you do that I think the rest of the stuff will take care of itself. Wow, wow, it's it's funny, Tim. So. In my current role, right, at, at uh, Truman College, I'm the director of enrollment management, but then had the opportunity uh, this year to also take over as the head women's basketball coach. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's, it, that's not an easy. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, right, I, I, it, it, I have such a different admiration for head coaches, right? Now, obviously, we don't have the same type of resources, and so you're wearing multiple hats, but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it was a huge responsibility. I think mm -hmm. that takes me to my next point, uh, the power of influence, the power of responsibility. Um, where do you hold that on your level of, you know, kind of understanding that you're in this position, right? So often people don't understand the power of influence. That's like more, that's better than having a bunch of money. Talk to mm -hmm. me about the power and your perception of the power of influence. The, the, the biggest thing, you, you don't want to misuse it. You don't want to, you know, because now you understand that, you know, with this platform come great responsibility. So you can't just do stuff for Tim anymore. You know, it's, it's way bigger than me. So selfishly, I always want to do some things, you know, it just, it's, for me but it's always someone watching always someone watching always someone watching you whether it's good or bad or you know trying to build or tear down or whatever so I think the influence you know it came it came you know through the grind through the process I think people saw me get it from the mud and 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 I never ever tried to backstab anyone I never ever you know I just continued to work and build and I think people respect that and Chicago is a is a blue collar city so and I think that was um one of the things that helped me, you know, because you saw me, you never ever tried to make me feel less than who I was. You always treated me with respect. You was the best player in the gym every Sunday when I came, but you never ever little boyed me. You never ever made me feel like 
I couldn't play with you guys. You never ever made me feel like I was less than a young man. You know what I'm saying? So you always, so ever since I've known you, Kiss, you've always empowered. And I think that was, that, that's huge. So that's some of the things that I try to take from everybody. I take that from you, you know, how you make people feel like they the best version of themselves. Like, no matter what, like, we can have so much stuff going on behind closed doors, but you just make them feel so good about themselves. Like, damn, kiss them. Am I really like that? You know, so now, <laughs> you know, that's that's crazy. And you know, I'm, you know I'm telling the truth, kiss me. And I tell people this all the time. Me and Smith was talking about you two weeks ago, and um, and, and this honestly is from the bottom of my heart. If people know you and don't like you, it's something wrong with them. I've never met someone that didn't like you. And I'm not saying you're going out your way to 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 make everybody feel good, but you're just so positive and so motivating. It's like, all right, you ain't get it out, and let's do next. Don't stop. Keep going. You know, we can lose a game, a close game. Man, dog, but nah, I should have made that shot. You instantly took accountability for something I knew in my mind. I just had three damn turnovers in a row at the end of the game. You <laughs> never ever said to him, I'm turning the damn ball over. You know, so you feel me though? And yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the type of stuff that you learn and you take with you and you empower people and you just got to use your influence the right way, you know, because I, I just feel like when, when I leave, I want my dash to, to, to be important. You know, that that's middle – from born to the middle, I want that to be like, man, Tim was a pretty good dude. He tried to help people. He tried to be as positive, you know, because, you know, I got some some bad ways in me too, Kiss and I, and you, me and you have plenty of conversations. Same stuff make me good, make me bad. I'm yep, stuck. Yep, yep. So, uh, and just knowing that and just understanding that and just trying to grow and trying to build and trying to be as positive as I can, especially now in these times. So that was, that was that's huge, you know, and, and the platform and just having that influence and just trying to, you know, hold people accountable because I hold myself accountable. Because I'm not gonna, t I'm not the type of dude to tell you kids like, "Oh man, it's it's, it's raining outside." No, nah, dude, that's piss on your head. You effing up. <laughs> and and but it's okay. And once you understand that my delivery ain't gonna always be good, but my message is gonna try to be solid. That's right. That's, that's what right. you know. That's what I pride myself on. It's funny, man, because I talked earlier, right, about the love, and a lot of it comes from these student athletes who I know that you've helped on some way. Uh, empowered or was able to have a conversation with right throughout um fatherhood it, it it's different from the normal leadership that we're talking about right um you bet, yeah my son and I I, I feel like we have a great relationship um I That's started true. off <laughs> early a little started off early you know I was I was pushy 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 but I learned and I listened to Cats Like Yourself, right, on how to deal with that, and he's doing really well. In your instance, fatherhood, how has that in any way changed you, or is it shaping you to be stronger? Does it help you deal with these student athletes a different way? Absolutely. I believe, um, I think being a parent is probably one of the hardest things because it doesn't come with a manual. Um, right. And you just got to learn every day. And then you're dealing with personalities, and 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 most importantly, you don't want to mess up your relationship with them at home. You know, you don't want to mess up your relationship with them at home. So you can't push too much, and now you're gonna have problems in the house that they don't want to do this. So I think you got to kind of set the stage and show them what it looks like every day to get up and go to work and come home and you know do your best, and and and, and then whatever they're trying to do, you support them. And don't try to live through them. Like, don't try to live your dream through them. Whatever dream, whatever dream that they have, you support it. So if my son want to be a soccer player, my son want to be a pianist, you know, I'm going to support that. I'm going to be at many events as I can. You know, of course, I love to play basketball. We would love to all to go and say, kiss your love and say, look at nephew on the, in the NBA. But it might not be in his cards. But that's okay. Because I think the, the most important thing is for them to be successful in whatever vehicle that they choose to drive. So. I understand that. And um, a lot of people say, man, Tim, how you're training? You train Andy Davis and Jabari and, and Derrick Rose and all these guys, and, you know, you don't train your son. So and my simple answer is that, you know, my son is a little lazy, so I don't want to push too hard and make my son hate me because I know how I can get kissed. I can go. When I go, <laughs> I'm going to go. So the most important thing for me is my relationship with my son at home. You know, I'm not jeopardizing that for anybody so I don't care about basketball when it comes to my kids but I think it it, it helped me um it, it makes it easier to deal with with, with with other athletes because 
you got to deal with, you know, teenagers and, and, and stuff like that. But it definitely helps you. Um, it helps you be, it helps you mature as a man. It helps you have more patience. It helps you be a better listener. Um, it just helps you understand that you don't know everything and you might know everything, but these guys that you talk to think they know everything and they might not know anything. So it's the balance of listening to them and understanding, um, you know, when I need to be aggressive, when I need to be assertive, when I need to be a listener, when I need to be caring. So just, yeah, having kids, it definitely teaches you, you know, how to deal with people, you know, uh, a little bit better. A little bit better. All right. We, we just about done here, man. Uh, the interesting part, where we talk to the most interesting people about the most interesting things, today's platform we have um, head assistant coach for DePaul University right here in Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Tim Anderson, uh, joining the platform. You mentioned earlier, we talked a little bit about father figures. Uh, you've had an opportunity to train at an early age. Mm -hmm. uh, what we see now, some of the star players um, in our league in the NBA, uh, what, mm -hmm. who are some of the people you've had an opportunity to work with? Who that list is uh, very, I, I've been blessed. You know, of course, you got Will Bynum. Uh, was one of the guys. Will the Thrill. Yeah, yeah, Will, Jabari, uh, Derrick Rose, Bobby Portis, uh, Sean Kilpatrick. Uh, I I can't even, I have so many from, you know, Chicago guys to you got Paul White and Alec Pisa. I've trained over 70 NBA pros um, on a day-to-day -day basis. I've been in the gym with a lot of guys, help develop their game um, and, and, and just being a part of it. But, you know, my thing with that kiss is like, I think it's just more so about those guys being comfortable with me and trusting me. You know, I think you can learn something from any trainer. I'm not, I'm not, you know, the best trainer. I never hey, say I'm the best. I, I may argue with you on that one. Cause I, when I watch Will, I see you all over. I know some of that was natural, but when I watch him, man, I see you all over. If you had to say, right, as my listeners listen, right, um, are there some common thread? Uh, obviously, those kids didn't know that they'd be pros when they first started out. Is there some common theme or some common behaviors that you recognize when you work some of these gentlemen out? Uh, I, I try to use the word insatiable uh, very, very little because that's just the top. Um, Will, Will had this, I'm going to make it regardless attitude. I'm going to outwork people. Uh, Will used to work out. We used to get to school. We used to work out before school. We, we used to leave school. We used to, we got out early. We used to go leave school and go play two on two full court, then come back to practice, leave practice, go work out with Sonny Parker, leave Sonny Parker, come to train, train and run on the track. And on the weekends, I, I promise you, I'm, I'm not lying. After all of that, we'll go hoop at extreme at like 12 o'clock at night. So all he knew at that age is like, someone told him, you just got to work hard as you can as you're going to make it. And, 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 and when I saw it firsthand and then being a part of that success and the fabric of it, you know, the way he think, the way he approached the game. And like, so now I feel like I do got kind of the answers to the test. If you want uh -huh. to be a pro, I can show you and help you how to be a pro. But don't tell me that you want to be a pro if you don't want me to hold you to the standard because it's different, you uh -huh. know. So I think a lot of those guys got that um, in them. They just – like you, like just basketball players. All I want to do is play basketball. They didn't really care about girls, didn't care about none of that stuff. They just wanted to play basketball as much as possible. And they understood with that talent that they have to now turn it into the work ethic and learn as much as they can. So you can kind of tell, um, you know, if they athletically, if they gifted, you can tell. But if they work a certain way, I know it. Like, oh, yeah, that's – he'll be all right, you know? And that, and that one characteristic that always stands out to you, is it hard work? Is it athleticism? Is it being smart? Is it court savvy? What's that one thing that kind of stands out in your – and I know everyone's different, but what's that one thing that stands out when you when you start talking about players and seeing players? I, you know, honestly, Kiss, I think – I can't say it's just one thing. I think to make it, I think it's probably three things. You, okay. Of course, you got to have talent, right? Then you gotta have work ethic. Then you gotta have the brains, okay. you know. So I think those three factors is important. The brains is more so important too because everybody got some type of talent. But having the brains and being able to adjust and understand and being able to take coaching and to be able to take criticism, being able to to for you to tell me something to apply it, me being able to be coachable, all of that is important. Being disciplined, that's 
that's at the top of, of, of my pyramid. Okay. You know, what I pride myself on, discipline, accountability, and structure, and et cetera. But I think those three things, kids, I couldn't let you put me in a box with one. So I think okay. those three things are really, really important. No, I think that's important for, 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 for kids to hear because that those were some general statements, but it's it's at the core who you need to be when when you start talking about you want to get in front of people and and be this super duper athlete. You didn't say anything about dunking or shooting no. the ball. You talked about a mindset and an ability. We're gonna end up here, man, once again. Truly appreciate you taking time out on this Friday. We play this game called Word Association. <laughs> and I'm just gonna ask you a word, and I, it may be tough, but I need you to try to answer with one word. First thing to come to your mind, right? <laughs> First thing to come to your mind, all right? Here we go. I'm gonna give you about 10 of them, so just run through them. And don't think a whole lot. <laughs> um, loyalty. Family. Education. Important. Character. Extremely important. Integrity. All of these are almost the same thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you want me to say one thing, I, I try to say, okay, kids, you're killing me because all of these are these are the pillars. What you doing? So, do this to me. Right, right, okay. <laughs> Friendship. Value. Value. Um, money. Need. Need. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, ain't here. we ain't out here just spinning our wheels. Right. We got to be real, kid. That's we right. Need it. We got to understand our value. Right. 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 Um, the, 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 the last one here I have is um, legacy. When you think about, I'm going to give you more than one word. When you think about yeah. your time and the work that you do, the, the work that you've done and the work that you're doing and the work that you're looking to do, when it's all said and done, what do you want that to, have you thought about what you want that to look like? No, that's crazy. Kiss, I, I haven't made that, made it that far in life. Um, right. Honestly, I'm trying to, you know, be the best version of myself every day because uh, I'm far from perfect. Um, and I know that, uh, I, like you said, I want to use this platform to influence people. But, you know, holistically moving forward, of course, you want to be remembered. You want, you want, you know, I want to be remembered as one of the, you know, the, the most genuine and loyal and lawyers people to do it. Um, and that someone that was very respectful and that was uh, uh, of, of everybody, very humble. Um, and that was just, and, and someone that took a little bit from everybody and someone that just, you know, use basketball to get a free education. Like I always say, I think kids get so caught up in trying to make it to the NBA and that's not gonna be in everybody's cards. But I think you can live a healthy life and take care of your family if you do it the right way because your degree is gonna help you for the duration of your life. Mm. And um, and I just wanna be remembered as 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 a really good dude and, and, and I just tried to help as many people as possible. And I'm and I'm grateful for the opportunity that 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 was that was given to me, and I want to give as much as I can. That's what's up, man. Here's the deal, too. Let us. I appreciate that. And then I said and thought I was like, yeah, but everybody you know and everybody you touched in a positive way, um, they're gonna make sure that they outline your legacy, right? And mm -hmm. I, I don't think that you're gonna have to tell people. You ain't going to never have to explain the type of person you are because from an action standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. People always look at your actions. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I think that you're doing an absolutely uh, wonderful job. Right before we get out of here, man, is there anything that you want our listeners to know? Uh, the interesting part is, once again, I'm your host, Kiss Allen. We've had uh, the pleasure of speaking with um, head assistant, Mr. Tim Anderson, DePaul University, we're ending up here. Is there anything that you want our audience to know or you want them to leave them with um, in terms of just being on the platform today? Um, I'm, I'm very, first of all, I'm very grateful for you having me. Uh, and you know, I've always looked up to you. I think I'm gonna take this time to put it back on you because <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people really understand 
who you are. I think they see you now and they probably see, you know, they don't understand that you're really, really like that. And you're really, really ultra, ultra positive. And you've been a, a pillar in our community for a long time. And you've always set out to help people. And, and, I, and I just, I'm just thinking about so many situations where, you know, uh, I've called you and you've helped me and I've been in jams, you've helped me. And I know it's just not me you're helping, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you do it for a lot of people. And I think, I think what I want to do, Kiss, I want to start people to, to, to celebrate and appreciate people more so when they're here. That's not, right. not when, you know, God forbid, Kiss Island, we can't live for 100 years, but, if, you know, you pass away. Now everybody want to say good stuff about Kiss. Everybody want to, you know, you know, have all these stories. How about we celebrate him now where he's here to feel it and embrace it? You know, I, I, because being going through this COVID thing, it, it gave me a different understanding to to really really to really really value and appreciate people way way more when they're here you know because there's so many funerals that we went to now they got all these stories and they man he was such a great person and let's 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 dedicate a street after his name no 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 let's do that while he's here you mm -hmm. know so i'm very very grateful for you dog and i appreciate everything you've done for me i can't tell you enough you smith you know all my mentors i can't when, when people ask me who's your mentors i got a list of people you know, from you guys to Mickey Halstead. So I got so many people that helped me and guided me and made sure that I had horse visors to stay that way because I wanted to look over there a little bit too. So <laughs> like I said, this, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for you, man. And I want people to, to, to be grateful for you as well. Not, not, you know, just because you're, you know, you got this platform, you're doing the talk show, but you really, really that dude and you really value yourself and, you know, with your twins and your, and your wife, you've always been a good dude, man. And I, and I love you and I appreciate you. And I want everybody to start doing a better job of loving each other and showing that love now. Man, see that, that, that's why I got you on the platform. It, it, it's just, that's who you are. And so, man, we appreciate you. Uh, once again, audience, this is Powered by the Ambassadors. We've had an excellent conversation today with one of Chicago greats. We'll go down legendary, I guarantee it. Mr. Tim Anderson, uh, thank you for being on the platform. Always remember, ladies and gentlemen, and pardon, fly low, avoid the radar, and remember, no matter what happens when they come for the car, save the radio. <laughs> So one of the components, man, I want to make sure that we hit on, I know that you attended Crane uh, Technical mm -hmm. High School right there on the west side. Uh, where did you go after you left Crane High School? So when I left Crane, uh, I went to East West University for a semester. Then I uh, ended up going to Malcolm X Community College. Well, I went for a semester, yeah. So And then I ended up going to Malcolm X Community College. But Malcolm X Community College was the best thing for me because when I left Crane, I wasn't ready to be – uh, 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 a student, a collegiate level student yet. So it taught me how to be disciplined. It taught me how to study. It taught me how to be in a room, uh, in lecture rooms and et cetera. So I ended up, you know, uh, graduating from Malcolm X with my associates in general studies. But, and, and I think it was important because the, the vehicle that was set up for a lot of our kids that can't go to four-year schools right away you have those community colleges, but it's crazy because we look down on them. People frown upon them and that's no, it was probably the best thing that happened to me because I ended up going to Oklahoma Panhandle State and graduating sum cum laude. I graduated 4.3 GPA and, you know, and, 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 but it helped me. It helped me study. It helped me prepare. It helped me. If she said you had a paper uh, in three months, I started working on that paper that night, Kiss, and Ooh. I'll turn it in. Um, that month and she'll give me a C and I turn it in again. She'll give me a B until I turn it in until I got an A and I still have three weeks left. But that structure and I think people got to people gotta embrace the community college a little bit more because it helped me. And I'm telling you, and I know it's set up for a lot of our kids, but a lot of our kids are not ready to be in those type of environments where it's one professor and 60 students and you can't really have a relationship. So it teaches you how to work and it teaches you how to be a uh, uh, a collegiate level student man so from malcolm x to a head assistant and one of the most prestigious head assistant men's basketball coach at one of the most prestigious universities in america um that's huge and 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 i think that's huge and so yep we're gonna i need students to hear that that is huge.